Welcome to this podcast on dermoscopy for assessing side effects of systemic treatment in oncology. Today, dermoscopy is not only limited to clinical diagnosis and it represents a real bridge in the management of patients receiving the systemic treatment for cancer. Patients treated with either classical chemotherapy, with immunotherapy or with new targeted therapies have an increased risk of developing skin reactions. Maybe among skin toxicities induced by classical chemotherapy, chemotherapy-induced alopecia is one of the most shocking for oncological patients and as you can see here, it is characterized by different dermoscopic features before, during and after chemotherapy. In particular, we have that black dots, broken hairs, exclamation marks and flame hairs are common at the beginning of the chemotherapy as a direct signs of cytotoxic and antiproliferating effects of the drugs. Pearl pink constrictions are visible all along the treatment phase while we have that black and white hair, circle hair and valley hair are observed during prolonged or post-chemotherapy phase as expression of the thin growing anagen hair. Changes in the nail unit are also common during the course of systemic chemotherapy and the dermoscopy, for example, can be useful to identify features of melanocytic activation, such as gray background of the band and thin, rawish, regular and parallel lines. Here we can also see white parallel transverse bands, known as Marcus lines, as another sign of chemotherapy. And in the last years, dermoscopy pursue has been demonstrated to be important for diagnosis and management of immune-related adverse events typical of immunocheckpoint inhibitors. Here, for example, a skin rash on the trunk of the patients received antibodies targeting the programmed cell death protein 1 for advanced melanoma. Dermoscopy showed the dotted vessels distributed in clusters, yellowish scales and serial crusts that we know are specific dermoscopic features of eczema. Here we have another patient under anti-PD-1 treatment for advanced melanoma with a pruritic rash on the legs resembling different conditions including epithelial rosa, lichen or also numular eczema. But under dermoscopy we have no doubt. Here we can see purely whitish annular structures also known as vicam striae, yellowish structures and dot and the short linear vessels that as we know are clear cut dermoscopic features of lichen. In this case, the annular patches appeared by dermoscopy as arciform erythematous areas with the linear vessels bounded by an irregular white tract border. In this case, suggestive of poor keratosis. Here we have another patient with a skin rash dermoscopically characterized by short linear vessels and orange patches that uh, uh, in this case are two hardly signs of mycosis fungoides that was described by some authors in patients received immunotherapy. Pigmentary disorders are another common cutaneous immune-related adverse effects, in particular in melanoma patients treated with the checkpoint inhibitors. By dermoscopy, it's easy to identify halo phenomenon and papering as signs of a regression of nevi, like for example in these patients after five months of immunotherapy, in which we can see in almost all nevi the presence of multiple grade as a sign of regression. Finally, cutaneous side effects are very common in oncology patients who receive targeted therapy. Here we have an itching skin rash during a MAC and BRAF inhibitors therapy for advanced melanoma, showing dermoscopically polygonal yellowish brown structures, linear vessels and whitish halo that we know are common dermoscopic findings in growers' disease. In fact, under BRAF inhibitors, 
computers, keratin cell proliferation and differentiation dysfunctions are extremely common, as well as dermoscopic changes in nevi. Here, for example, we have female patients under Becky and Birafi treatment for advanced melanoma, in which we have together grower disease, keratacantoma, and also dermoscopic changes in nevi. And uh, uh, this last aspect can be explained considering that nevi curing and activating BRAF mutation can be also targeted by BRAF inhibitors. And in particular, from literature, we know that the BRAF mutations are highly frequent in nevi classified as globular and mixed reticular homogeneous nevi with the peripheral globules by dermoscopy, which correspond to dermal and compound nevi by histopathology. In contrast, we have that in most reticular pattern nevi, which usually are predominantly junctional nevi, no BRAF mutated clones are commonly found. Here we have an example of uh, dynamic changes of pre-existing melanocytic nevi during uh, the BRAF inhibitor bemurafenib therapy documented by sequential digital dermoscopy. The authors reported a variety of dermoscopic changes, including uh, evolution of nevi, most of them uh, with a globular pattern, and activation of reticular nevi with uh, the development also of atypical features, like for example, in uh, the last two pictures. Thank you for your attention.